And now, from one city-bred rebel to the perpetual rebel of American architecture, Mr. Frank Lloyd Wright, the man who called interior decorators inferior desecrators. He remains at 84 years of age, a perpetual rebel and the perpetual pioneer who believes that democracy has not yet made anything like ample use of the new forms that are proper to it. We're going to question him about some of these things this afternoon. Now, he was once asked, what is your greatest achievement? And he said, the next building I'm building. We happen to have a model of it here, but before that, I'd like just to suggest to you that if we, any of us were asked from, the, from Seattle to Miami, New York to San Francisco, what are some of the things that are the essentially typical characteristics of modern architecture? I think a lot of people would say, well, a uh, picture window, setback skyscraper, a ranch type house, air conditioning. These are only a few of the things that Frank Lloyd Wright has inaugurated. Uh, I think now let's take a look at this next building he's building. It's a skyscraper, the Price Tower, and it's being going to be built in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Let's take a good look at it by day. Now, the ground has been broken. And I'd like to remind you that this is in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Mr. Wright, I'm my sir. first question, right. my first question has to do with the fact that here is a skyscraper in Oklahoma. Why out on the plains? Why in Oklahoma? Well, don't you understand that a skyscraper, to be ethical, must cast its shadow on its own ground? I didn't know until now, but now I'm very humbly you see, aware. <clears throat> a skyscraper has no chance to develop its character any more than a tree would if it stood too close to other trees. It can only develop a top. But here, it has a chance to become a complete thing in its own right. So you don't approve of skyscrapers in cities? Skyscrapers in cities increase congestion. They were devised originally to hold concentration where it is and they've proved to be the death of the city or will eventually if they keep on building them in cities this particular one appeared on the cover of time mag no uh, new york times magazine about 40 years ago the identical design not identical but no. the scheme the general design of course now this has been perfected Something that, uh, that our uh, viewers can't see uh, and won't for a couple of years is that this is in is blue. Now, why <clears throat> why the blue color? Because copper has been used very largely in these shades for the glass. Glass is merciless unless you shade it, uh -huh. and it also helps the air conditioning of the building, keeps the sun off sun glare off the glass. And this is the first time that a skyscraper has been divided vertically. One quarter in uh, duplex apartments. Oh, this is not entirely an office building. Not entirely oh, an office nice. building. That's something centralization missed. I don't know why. And around three quarters is uh, offices. Well, now, is the idea that people after a hard day can just slump right into their apartments? Is that it? Or? Well, it can work in so many different ways. It's hard to predict how it will work. But you can imagine how a doctor or a dentist would have one of these apartments. Here's his uh, sleeping quarters down below here. Well, it's a balcony. So Living room, room. that's the balcony. And these are the bathrooms and kitchens running up here. And this is occupied by the Price Company at the top. Uh, talking about the top, Mr. Wright. They're preeminent at their own expense. They're not impinging upon any neighbor. <laughs> uh, 
What about the the, uh, the the top that looks? I thought that that was uh, supposed to be a, a very uh, naughty feature of modern architecture when they put uh, frescoes and uh, and Greek uh, pediments and and that looks like a Gothic spire up there. Yes, sir. That's a radio spire. Oh well, I think television really has a and all the rest of it has a function. And right. Mr. Price's office is here in the center. And. Uh, this roof garden, which you see here, I guess you can see it on this side too, yes. All around here, roof garden, to be used by the employees of the Price Company. You know, the Price Company is the big pipeline company. They did the big inch and the little inch. Well now, sir, all these conceptions must start somewhere, and I suggest that maybe uh, we'd like to have you go to a drawing board and show us. We've got one here. We do. By the way, this was stolen from the show, and it ought to be taken oh. back quick. Not only that, I should mention that this uh, will be taken back, that uh, Mr. Wright is holding an exhibition of 60 years of his work in New York at the Guggenheim. That happens to be the centerpiece of the show, and of course the people are anxious to see it. They will, they will have it tomorrow. But now, I suppose sir, several people are seeing it now. About 13 million. Uh, as many as may visit the show Good. this week. Uh, no, what I would like to tell you, sir, is ask you is, um, I think you've said in your book many times over that democracy is not using the forms which are proper to it, the, the new forms. What are those new forms? My dear Alistair, it isn't using its own form as it should use it. I don't think it's aware of exactly what that form is. Well, what are the but materials? It's freedom. Isn't democracy the uh, gospel of individual freedom or the freedom of the individual? So it is be, it using uh, it? Well, now you tell me. Now take our housing. Take nearly everything we do architecturally. It's a repetition of some stupid pattern. Built on a rectangle. Built on anything except a facility for life. Well, now are there any materials that have given us the possibility of breaking with these old forms? Well, when we had steel, when steel came in, you see, we could pull on a building. We what had that it, element of tension. Mean? The most economic thing in the world is this. And you could make buildings that were like that, indestructible, you see, and economical. Whereas you used to have to make them like this, and well, then pull well, apart. Is all this, uh, all the ten fingers steel when you do that? I mean, or is there something else? Well, anything that is in tension, like a wire. Yeah. When you reduce steel to tension and pull on it, you have the most economic means of construction Ever devised. Of course, the Greeks didn't have it. What do you support it with? Well, it uh, is an element in itself that supports whatever you embed it in, or you can use it without concrete. When concrete and steel were found to be able to sleep together and stay together, the body of our modern world was born, you see, because there you had the most economical means in tension, imaginable. Steel. Great spaces could be spanned. And then when glass came in, you could close them without cutting off the inhabitants from the outside. And entirely new means of building appeared. Well, now, sir, you've talked about breaking from the, <clears throat> the, the apparently we're very laggard in, in breaking with the old forms of boxes and uh, uh, slabs. The old um, box was inevitable because we had to build the box in order to build anything. Why? But when glass and steel came in, the corners of the box could be knocked away, and the whole interior could be freed, you see. Could you give By us... way of the cantilever. Could you... Ah, oh, tell us about the cantilever. Now, what is the cantilever principle? The cantilever principle is the principle of getting a load under the center, and one balancing the other, you see. That's the characteristic of that price tower. Oh, I see. Supporting. What makes it economical is that all the loads are under the center, and that building will weigh about uh, six and three tenths, a little over half what the Rockefeller Center buildings weigh because of the utilizing of this principle of the cantilever. Now, sir, would you like to show us what uh, free forms you've taken in your own designs for houses? Well, don't you think housing, the housing we do, is inexpressibly on a low level, stupid. Awful, awful monotonous, I don't know about... Uh, Little boxes repeated one after another. This is very exciting, but I'd like to know what it is. This is a plan for a house for my son down in Washington, Llewellyn. 
And you see in here the use of steel, intention, the curve, the curve, curvicular form. No, this is, what's this? Is this a? This is the main floor, and this is the second story. Here. Oh, I see. And then this is what, a terrace or something? And that's a circular terrace. It's built on a side hill. You can see here where the ground yeah. drops away. I think we have some pictures up here. Could we take a look at it as a, a visitor or somebody walking through the... Well, this would be the elevation on the architect's drawing board here. Does that mean that that's one side of the house? That's can... the front elevation of the house, so-called. But surprisingly enough, it develops this in perspective when it's built. You see the various the lower terrace and the upper form of the house, which is a simple oval. And this little balcony projects here from the master bedroom. And it's all of that form because it has a continuous view uh, all about it of a very attractive countryside. Where, where, what, where, where is this being uh, built? This is being built in Virginia. Now, if you were doing a building, Washington. if you were doing a building in uh, some other part of the country, in the deep south or the far west. Oh, here, look, we have something here now. Where, where is this? Uh, oh, this is out in Phoenix, Arizona. This is son David's house. This was for your son. You have also built of the same concrete block that this is built of. Well, now and what? That's a patio house. Of course, it's very hot out there, and you have to get some recourse from the hot sun, which in this house you have at the center. And yes. also, by raising it from the ground, you avoid the dust of that region. Oh, you mean this is the actual level of the? This is the actual level of What's the house. What's all this here. underneath? This is the. You're looking at the house from the rear. The front of the house is here. Oh. You I enter see. into the court and you go up a ramp, which you see here. Does that explain to the main this? Floor I was going to ask house. about this sort of brim of a hat. Well, this little ramp goes up to a little roof garden on the top. So you can come up from the main entrance to the roof garden, if you please, as you come up the ramp on the other side. Well, now. It's all extremely simple, and these forms seem like complicated, expensive forms, but they're easier to live with, easier to live in than the rectangular ones. <clears throat> uh, I've, I've noticed that, you, that you've shown us two houses designed for your two sons who are very lucky. They just I, happened to be here together. It occurs to me. I dare say you picked them out. And if I wanted to uh, have you design a house for me, which would express the freedom of democracy, uh, well, doesn't how much would it cost me to be free? It would cost you less to be free than it would to be stupid and confined. Well, I mean, in terms of hard cash, which I think a lot of people may be thinking of, how much well, would no, this house, house cost? that house cost about $45,000. This one? Yes, and I suppose this will cost thirty-five or forty. Only thirty. dollars <coughs> Well, that, that that's... That's about what they sell a GI a house for out in Levittown, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now, you mean a young architect that uh, could... could uh, if he had your experience and your principles and your uh, determination, could could uh, design houses like this at oh, that price? Oh, I think price? he could design better ones, probably. Oh, well, now. I, I mentioned a young architect. Look at this tribe here, for instance. Here are these little shells. You know, this is a, a lower form of life, supposedly, but see how it houses itself. Aren't these things remarkable and aren't they beautiful? And see how varied they are. One type, one kind of humanity, but not humanity, but <laughs> form of life, see what it does in the way of housing. Well, see this I, elaborate one here. How about this simple one, sir? The simple Explain one? Explain that. What, what was the function well, of that? Well, that would probably be the type of thing that would belong to the sort of thing that you see in Levittown, wouldn't it? You mean a, a little, uh, well, what, what, is the, it's a retreat. You can certainly say that. It's a home. It's a house. It's housing. And when we house ourselves, why don't we do something as consistently beautiful and simple as this? What's the matter? Well, now we I'm have the means. All we lack is the know-how. Or you... is it the feeling? Maybe we haven't got the feeling. Oh, <laughs>